What is going on guys and gals, Brooklyn Bound the Raid Scientist here and today, with the Raid Challenges out and Master Crota Zen being available, it now means we have the opportunity to obtain Adept Raid Weapons through completing the Weekly Master Challenge or Double Loot Drops if you're doing the Weekly Challenge on Normal Difficulty. The Adept Raid Weapons from completing Master Challenges are not fixed in Crota's End like they are in other raids, meaning you will get a random Adept Raid Weapon after beating the Challenge Mode, instead of everybody in the encounter getting the exact same one. You can then repeat the challenge on other characters and get different weapons, and they seem to be duplicate protected. Remember that weekly challenges rotate by each encounter weekly and contain a specific mechanic in addition to completing the encounter normally to obtain those additional rewards. This week, the challenge is done on the second encounter, the bridge, and is called Precarious Balance. I'm only going to explain the challenge as if you already knew how to do the rest of the encounter normally. If you need a full guide on the bridge encounter, check out my full Crota Zen guide link down in the description and skip to the bridge section. And remember, if you're doing this on Master, the power level is 1840, with your maximum effectiveness being power level 1820. Now, to do the Precarious Balance Challenge, you can only cross the bridge when nobody is on the middle plate and the bridge is not fully built. The easiest way to do this is when the bridge is deconstructing after being built, because it gives you the most space to run before having to jump up over. However you want to coordinate the Enlightened buff is up to you. Most teams prefer to do the Enlighten Everyone strategy, but remember that strategy is best if no one dies. And if you're doing it on Master, it makes it a little bit trickier due to the health and the lethality of all the adds. Remember, you're going to need anti-barrier weapons here, and I like to use Xenophage or Heavy Machine Guns as my heavy to take out the adds quickly. Strand is also pretty nice here, but so is Solar for the healing abilities, so it doesn't really matter. On Master difficulty, also remember that will be unstoppable ogres at the end, so keep that in mind. It's also not a bad idea to have one player, maybe the Chalice player, use Tractor Cannon, have Healing Grenades, and or a Blinding Grenade Launcher to help the sword-bearing players kill the Gatekeepers on Master Mode without too much trouble. Now, when doing the challenge, and most people are still at the beginning side, the best way to do it is to build the bridge completely, and then have actually the sword holding player, or the chalice player, stand on the middle plate. That way when they get off, and head across the bridge, the bridge will immediately start deconstructing, and they can just run up and then jump over. Remember that if you're holding the chalice, or the sword, you can use your grenade, aka grapple, to help you across, if you're struggling with the jump. So throw on strand and it might help. You just can't use your class ability or swap weapons when holding the sword. The bridge deconstructs pretty fast, so you gotta run across quickly to be able to make the jump. Repeat this process until the first three players have crossed in this fashion. Then, you're gonna need to coordinate a little bit more because the sword bearing players will obviously be on the beginning side, but the person holding the bridge plate will now be on the far side. So when the sword player kills the sword bearer and picks it up and is ready, they get as close to the bridge as possible, and then tell the player on the other side holding the middle plate that they can step off, and the sword bearing player will start running and then jump across. Once across, the player who got off the middle plate can hop back on to rebuild the bridge for the next person. Remember that the only time the totems have to be stood on is when the middle bridge plate is activated. So if the middle plate isn't occupied due to doing the challenge mechanic, the totem players can hop off briefly. Just communicate before you get back on, so they can get back on their totems. Repeat this process for all six players, including the chalice player. Note, with this challenge, if you ever have to go back to revive someone or re-enlighten someone, you have to perform this mechanic again. Nobody can cross the bridge with anyone on the middle plate and the bridge being fully built. And that's it. The challenge mechanics aren't really that bad. Sometimes the jump can be a little bit of a pain or tricky to get used to. And on master mode, the ads can be a little bit difficult. But keep at it and you get this one done. Best of luck, everyone, and thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.